I've never really had this happen to me before, is we did a story for the University of Oregon uh, for the Archives and Special Collections Department. They have all the, the uh, archives from a woman named Peg Lynch. She was a pioneer in television history long before Lucille Ball was around. Um, but Peg, we, um, we felt like she was a forgotten footnote and we did this story, put it on YouTube, a lot of you saw it, um, and then Peg watched it. She's 98 years old. She got to watch the story and they said she just looked at it and was like in awe that she was finally documented in history. And then um, just recently after seeing that, she passed away. So I cannot tell you as a guy who puts together videos and stories how awesome that is uh, to know that she got to see what you're about to look like and know that she will not be forgotten. In the history books, she's a footnote and she needs to be more than a footnote. Her name is Peg Lynch. Lynch is the woman standing up to the right in this original copy of her television show. She was a pioneer in television history. You know, she was there at a critical moment when television was blossoming. Special Collections and University Archives at the University of Oregon is curator to the Peg Lynch Collection. Kinescopes, original manuscripts, scripts, and letters, all opening the door to the earliest years of television history. And then to discover that Peg is still living uh, she's 98 years old, um, still going strong. We were able to go meet with her and then to add material to the collection. When I, when I started, it was with uh, Dave Gendling, father bought the first National Bank of Wanda radio station, so it put a lot of money in, it was very cute. And I said, do you think I could get a job? I was about 13, 14. Peg Lynch was a radio and television star. She was actually one of the inventors of the, what we call the um, television sitcom. She uh, worked in radio first, of course, and developed this show called Ethel and Albert. It started out as a 10 minute segment on the Kate Smith evening hour. Of course you watch them and laugh with them. So I think now that we'll turn the evening over the, the next part. What, what I find so remarkable about the shows is that the premise or the plot of the shows center on these domestic conflicts that really, I think, transcend time. Ethel and Albert predates I Love Lucy. Yeah, I guess Ethel and Albert stayed um, on TV until 56. But at a certain point in television history, there was a decision to do comedies, to do sitcoms in Southern California, in Hollywood. Peg Lynch chose not to go to Hollywood, but to stay in New York. She really wanted to raise her daughter in back east, basically, uh, uh, instead of Hollywood. By 1956, the television career was over. she started to do a radio show called The Couple Next Door, but basically it was Ethel and Albert, just with different characters. Life is about choices. Peg Lynch chose to keep the copyrights to her show, which is why it never ended up in syndication. And she's just a fabulous person. You know, I love talking with her. She's got all these great stories. It's just exciting to talk to her. You know, it's like, you, it's like, living history, basically. You ask her, what was it like working with Kate Smith? Or tell me your experiences meeting all these famous um, actors, movie celebrities who wanted to appear on TV and they were terrified because they'd never done it before. Most Americans um, don't know anything about the show. And to me, that's really a shame. You know, they really should know something about this early television history that's encapsulated in this show, Ethel and Albert. Her part in that hasn't really been written yet. So we really want researchers to come into Special Collections 
to use her collection and learn about this history and write about it. Once pe more people know about her work, she'll be um, uh, situated more solidly in TV history. It's such a fascinating story, it needs to be told.